in this episode, we are going to be reviewing Notorious from 1946. This was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It was written by Ben Hecht, and it starred Cary Grant, Ingrid Bergman, and Claude Rains. Welcome to Robert Bellissimo at the Movies. This is a YouTube video podcast where we explore movies from all over the world and talk about how those stories were told on film, as well as interviews with various industry professionals who work in film, television, and theater. I want to welcome back to the show, Jen Johans, who is a three-time National Award-winning writer, a Rotten Tomatoes and Cherry Picks approved film critic, and a walking movie encyclopedia at her site filmintuition.com after working for nearly 15 years as a professional and freelance writer in which she in which she published over 2500 reviews and articles she launched the she launched the podcast watch with jen which uh is a great podcast which i really really like jen welcome back thanks so much for joining me again today Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I loved our discussion on Goodfellas. And so I'm really excited to come back and talk. No, me too. Me too. And Hitchcock, I was curious before we jump into the content of Notorious, I, I was curious, uh, when did you start to get into to Hitchcock? Was he an early influence or did he come later in your film journey or what, what, he was where, an where early favorite. Yeah, <laughs> okay. one of my early favorites, favorite filmmakers from the time I was in grade school. I think he's really accessible. He's a very visual filmmaker. And then later, as you get older, you start noticing all the subversive stuff and the more you read. But when you're young, you're just uh, paying attention to the cool suspense and some of the little tricks. Like I have a fond memory of watching Vertigo for the first time and like literally jumping off my chair at the end as a kid oh, because yeah. I couldn't believe that's how he <laughs> ended the film. So yeah, I'm a huge fan for sure. Do you, what are some uh, favorites of yours? Well, Vertigo is my all time favorite. I would also say that- Mine too, mine yeah, too. Yeah, Notorious is easily in the top five. Um, I would also put Rear Window right up there, Shadow of a Doubt, of course. And then I always kind of go back and forth on the, the fifth spot, possibly The Lady Vanishes, but mm. uh, there are many that would fill that place, yeah. Do you, do you remember the first time you, you saw this? Notorious, I don't have a vivid memory of the first time, but I know that I responded to it immediately. This is going to sound sacrilege, Casablanca is a gorgeous film. I love that movie, but I do find myself like if we're talking about Ingrid Bergman, I will watch this one more than Casablanca. Actually, there's something kind of cool about uh, the woman being the one going undercover and yes. being put in these um, situations. And so this is one that I immediately gravitated to as like, I love Casablanca, but you know, I would always recommend when people would talk about it, like, did you see Ingrid in Notorious? Because my goodness, yes. You know what, that's a, that's a really interesting point. And I, I, because I, I was actually when I, you know, I've seen Notorious a couple of times, but when I was watching it again, I couldn't help but for some reason thinking about Casablanca and wondering uh, what it would be like if Cary Grant <laughs> was uh, <laughs> yes. in, in the in the Bogart part, because I because I find that their their chemistry, the romantic chemistry between Grant and and um, Ingrid Bergman, like really really um, emotional. Like you can yes. feel the heat. Like it's 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 a very um, sensual and and yeah. believable. I, I mean, I think that that's partly the 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 script and and the writing uh, versus mm -hmm. versus Casablanca. But uh, that that's one thing that with Casablanca, I find the love story was a little uh, not so much tacked on, but it didn't it just for me didn't wasn't sort of thoroughly explored or like as no. much as it is here where this whole thing is, you know, we also have a love triangle like in Casablanca. But for yeah. me, this, this one's just so much more believable. And I think a lot of it has to do with it, with the chemistry of the performers. 
I agree with you. Yeah, there's more of an immediacy and an urgency in Notorious because we're watching these events unfold, whereas in Casablanca, it's mostly told in flashbacks. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that might be something uh, that plays a part for sure. Also, of course, you have like the most famous kiss probably before, you know, the Thomas Crown affair of kiss. Uh, <laughs> and I was watching this morning an interview with Isabella Rossellini, who's, of course, as people know, Ingrid Bergman's daughter. And she was talking about how it was kind of an F you to the censors. Right, because, right. Yeah, you could only have them kiss for two seconds and, it, you know, it couldn't be um, lengthy, but it feels very lengthy. And it Isabella really was does. saying that it was actually like talking to her mom it was more intimate than a longer kiss yes because they had to do it so long and like cling to each other through rooms and um so the level of friendship and the level of intimacy you have to have to like keep kissing and nibbling and doing all these things you would do with someone you're actually in a relationship with instead of just faking one kiss on screen really added to it i think no, I totally agree. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I, I love Bogart, but oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not saying I'm not saying Cary Grant would be a better Rick, but no, there, just, no. uh, there's something about the, the at least just the, the love story here that is feels uh, you, you can really feel the heat much more than you do um, in Casablanca. So I, I, I was curious when you when you watch it now, do you have a, a very similar response to it as you initially did has your feelings evolved about it or um, what was that like to see it to see it again recently um you know i think my experiences have evolved over time obviously like the more it, uh, relationships you have and the more life experience you're going to watch things differently of course uh you know you see it as a film academic a certain way back then i did remember enjoying it when i would revisit it as a teenager after seeing like mission impossible 2 which uh robert town wrote because he loves hitchcock and it was a play on notorious like sending this woman in and then being yeah. mad that she seduced him too well and john woo directed it and it's actually everybody makes fun of that one but i think it's quite beautiful there's some really good stuff in it yeah, I just is, read that today. I, yeah. I saw that. I saw that when it came out in uh, the year 2000, I believe. So I don't really, all I remember is the weird, like, taking off of faces, like the masks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember anything other than that. And I read today that it's, they borrowed a lot from this film. They did. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I would be curious <laughs> when you go back and rewatch it because it is there and uh, there are some moments that feel like nods because John Woo is a big classic uh, film lover right. and a big romantic. He actually doesn't like, you know, guns and violence. That's what he's known for, but he would rather tell love stories. And I think that's what he tried to do in that. And, um, you know, Notorious over the years, I also just really respond to seeing Cary Grant in this mode because you mostly think of him as such a suave, classy, debonair, gentleman's gentleman. And it's kind of cool to see him play like a jerk and mm. see this side of him show some range and some prickliness. I watched this not too long after rewatching North by Northwest a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, in a weird way, these movies kind of bookend each other. And there's something about sending a woman undercover to like sleep with people that goes on in both the films and Carrie's character getting mad and jealous and um, being both good, but also kind of a jerk in places. And oh, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's interesting when you rewatch them over the years, for sure. That, that really popped out to me because uh, I, I, I think it's been about five years since I'd seen Notorious and, and uh, I, I, I forgot like that that he you know he is <laughs> yes. he has his share of, of serious flaws and I think Hitchcock was the films that he was in that Hitchcock directed I I, I think you saw more of those sides to him like I, even yes. suspicion uh like he's, he's really abused like even in that film even more so than this one um yeah. Like he's, he's a really abusive guy and they actually had to tone the uh, novel down because in the novel um, of suspicion, he was the character was was much, much worse. But you're right. I mean, he was he was quite good at that. And I think he gets away with it because 
he is at the same time so charming and mm-hmm. funny and suave and confident and sophisticated and and a, such a handsome you yeah. know attractive man that um you can forgive his flaws because what really popped out to me this time and i'm always really this is what is interesting about the, the movies hitchcock made is because if you look at them often on paper and you just read out what they're about they often sound so silly and ridiculous as if no one is going to believe it but yet (laughs) he makes you i mean i guess you you could say that about a lot of maybe more uh uh, conventional films uh in well i'm not saying that this is so so conventional well i shouldn't say conventional I, i suppose you know, it, movies in general, obviously, sometimes you can go really broad, sometimes not, yeah. things like that. Um, For sure. But but his films often, you know, if you look at them on, on paper, it's like, well, this who would do this? And, 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 and how could these things happen? And who's going to believe this? But yet, as you're watching the film, he br- brings you into it because, as he said, he fills shot by shot with, with emotion that you... You get really, really pulled into it. And it's it's not, it, I guess it depends on what kind of a viewer you are. Because it's not, at least for me later, a, a few hours later, I'll be like, hang on a second. Why, why, you know, I'll start to think about some, some of the motives or some of the things that happen. And I know that, and I'm sure you know, reading Hitchcock Truffaut, that critics often criticized him for like a lot of like the implausible scenarios. Mm-hmm. And how he was like, well, they don't understand like that. That's that's the point. You know, it's not yes. just about making something realistic. It's about making the implausible plausible. But then at the same time, he would be concerned with, <laughs> yeah. with those with people being like, I don't believe this. Uh, so he would always, you know, try to, he, you know, that that was something that he even he doubted at times. Um, but in this film. You know, for example, I, I I was curious if is was there anything that during the film or even later some of the more implausible scenarios in it take you out of it, or is it are you do you just feel totally invested? I am totally invested, but I'm going to go back to what you were saying because I think it was such a good point about Cary Grant being used by Hitchcock in this fashion. I think it's so true, and he did it with. Jimmy Stewart too. He loved using these movie stars in kind of twisted, perverse ways Mm -hmm, and showing mm -hmm. like a kinky, weird side of these people that, you know, I think he took a lot of um, sick pleasure knowing Hitchcock in doing that for sure. (laughs) And you brought up, um, not spellbound, suspicion. And one of my favorite reads on suspicion, because I always get mad at the copped out ending of like, oh, you know, they're fine or whatever. He's not really bad. But one of the best reads that I've heard on it is Guillermo del Toro, who actually said, if you rewatch the ending, you're not really sure he is good because he said, you know, his arm goes around her and it's kind of like a tentacle and it kind of, you know, he's got this look on his face and you're not really sure, like they might be fine for this minute, but is he good? And so I love that Del Toro kind of like zoomed in on that as a director. Yeah, course, it's much more yeah. open-ended than people may may think. Yeah. I mean, I think he, he had to satisfy the censors yes. by, by clo- you know, happy ending and, and giving everybody, uh, you know, a, a solution to, to the problems. But um, when you really think about it, yeah, I mean, yeah, and you you so, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, and so when you think of the sort of the texts or the films of Cary Grant, you put them together, they all kind of say interesting things about the same character, or they, you know, there's poisoning, or is there, or what is going on, or sending these women under, like, there is a through line going through whether they intended it or not, some of the Cary Grant films. And so I do think that's really interesting. But as far as um, taking me out of it, no, I go on the ride. I know these are super convoluted and, you know, you're not really supposed to think about, wow, they got engaged that fast or really would that happen? Like you're not really, you know, you're just so transported, like, you know, caught up in the scene with the key and uh, wanting to follow that where it's going to go. So I completely just 
buy right into it, but you know, I'm willing to go on that ride for Hitchcock. Sure. <laughs> No, me too. I, and just in case it, perhaps some people haven't seen this, I'll just read out a very short summary on IMDb. So it's the daughter of a convicted Nazi spy, which is Ingrid Bergman, is asked by American agents to gather information on a ring of Nazi scientists in South America. How far will she have to go to in, 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 oops, ingrate? How do you say this? Ingratiate herself? Ingratiate with them. herself. Ingrate, yeah. Okay. See, my English is not as good. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> I was like, it's a I weird am, word I, to use. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. That is a weird one. Who wrote this? There's, there's, there's so many of them here, <laughs> but I thought I would um, <laughs> read the shortest one. Basically, you know, how far will, will she go to find out what they're after? Uh, sorry, yes. to find out what they're up to. And, and that very much is the MacGuffin. You know, the, the MacGuffin mm -hmm. here is what is this Nazi spy ring that Ingrid Bergman's father was a part of and he went to jail for you see off the top and then he hangs himself in prison and and they they get her to go undercover to to see what they're up to but as we know with a lot you know pretty much all of Hitchcock's films is uh that's just a device to get the story going because mm -hmm. you, you're very much you you're very much more emotionally wrapped up in the love triangle but that happens between Claude Rains, Cary Grant, and um, Ingrid Bergman, and something that I, I that Hitchcock said that I find really appealing about the film is that Claude Rains, being you know here he is, he's a Nazi, he's a villain, but he's it, it's not like cut and dry. Like I I find myself feeling sorry for him in a way because he and and Hitchcock says felt that he loved Ingrid Bergman more than Cary Grant did and, and I suppose that's up to the audience what they felt uh that was Hitchcock's feelings and I I, I could see what he means because you know Cary Grant basically you know l lets her go undercover uh yeah. al allows her to marry go as far as yeah. marry this guy uh, and and doesn't say, hang on, let's, you know, let's step back. Let's figure yes. something else out. Now, you can say that he did that out of his duty towards his country, out of his patriotism. You can also say that she's doing it out of her own patriotism. You see early in the film uh, mm -hmm. when when she after she gets drunk at the party and then he brings her back home. And then the next morning he plays uh, a recording of her, you know, because they were taping her arguing with her father and she says how much she loves her her country um but you know okay let let's say that that's the case but uh there's this odd sort of uh power dynamic it's like Cary Grant says to her well I'm testing you I want to see if you're going to be the one to say I won't do this uh because yeah, he's, he's already wary of her he doesn't quite yes. trust her and then she says the same to him I want you to be the one to stop this. And I really don't think Claude Rains would have done any, I think he would have been like, you're not doing this. <laughs> I agree, but it's like they're playing romantic chicken essentially. Yeah. Or like uh, when you're in a relationship and you don't want to be the first person to say, I love you or, exactly. but they go the other way where it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to try to seduce them because you're not stopping me. And is that what you want? And it, it's very, <laughs> very bizarre. It's very twisted, very Hitchcock. What we're saying uh, is if you're watching this uh, video and you've never seen Notorious, like there is some stuff that goes on in this movie. You're going to love it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And no, it, it, you're right. I mean, it has this sort of like uh, twisted, dark sense of humor as all of Hitchcock's films, you know, do. There's always something very funny uh, even in even the most serious yes. uh, of situations. And there's something funny about the fact that she is willing to marry this guy and yeah. she's, and, and, and she's waiting to see if Cary Grant's going to stop, stop him, stop yep. her. Uh, and I like how they, you know, we, we mentioned earlier how they, they got around the censors because as you had mentioned, they could only kiss, uh, I think for no more than three seconds, two or three yep. seconds. So mm -hmm. they would kiss, two seconds and then talk a little bit another two seconds so it felt as though they were like having a long like a yeah. sex scene basically and there's a lot of sort of 
you know, implications of a, a lot of talk about sex in this film as well. There is, yeah. For example, when she goes to the headquarters and says, you know, oh, that Claude Rains, you know, his character, oh, he wants to, he, he's proposed to marry me. What should I do? He wants to get married as she's undercover. And they all sort of think, oh, you know, what should we do? And then she's looking at Cary Grant and you could see, I mean, the performances are great because her eyes are saying, yeah, they to me are saying, are you going to stop this? And then yeah. he just looks at her and says, well, you know, maybe uh, Claude Rains is going to delay our plans if because he's yeah, going to want to yeah. go on a, a, on a romantic honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah. And of course, what do you do on a romantic honeymoon, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so, I know, or the line about um, where she tells him, like, you can add him to my list of playmates now. It's just like, wow, yes. yeah, they're just messing with each other. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's so much of that banter. Mm -hmm. And um, even early in the film, and this is this is something that uh, per perhaps a, a, you know, a, a, a modern audience would have a modern audience would have a harder time with was you know he's wary of her from the start I can I can see why he'd be wary of her because of who her father was and because yeah. he was a Nazi but he's also he's saying these sexist things towards her like for example yes once he finds out that she, that the, her boss wants uh, that their boss wants her to go undercover um, and and seduce Claude Rains. Th that was their way to find out exactly what they were up to. Mm -hmm. um, she come. He comes back to the apartment, and you know she's happy to see him. And he's like, "Oh God, how am I going to break the news?" And then she's and then she sees how solemn he is, and then she says, "Oh, I bet you you're going to tell me that you have two kids and that you're married." And he goes, "Oh, I've heard. I, I bet you you've heard that line often." Often he says, yeah. you know, so I in other know. words, you've had a lot of partners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, ooh, he's kind of a dick in that movie. Yeah. He really, he really <laughs> is. And, and I couldn't understand like, why was he thinking like he was like slut shaming her? And the only thing I could think of is that perhaps back then, because we saw early in the film, she was like, like at that party drinking a lot. Yeah. And, and she, you know, she gets really, really drunk. And so it's kind of like, oh God, you're so unbecoming. You must, you must be sleeping around if you'll get this yeah. drunk at a party. They probably How dare had a you? file on her too, I would guess. Probably because yeah. of her father. And so yeah, she she seemed like she was maybe the idle rich or a woman who maybe was more experienced, especially in those days, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, but yeah, there's there's a lot going on in this one for sure. And it's also interesting because it is Ingrid Bergman and anyone who knows her story of falling in love with uh, Rossellini oh, when she yes. was married yes. and then, uh, getting pregnant and all the, the, the big scandal with her. And um, so I, that adds another layer when you watch this movie. Like when I was older and I, I learned the story of Ingrid Bergman, you know, you do watch the movie a little differently. Yeah. You know what? That's a really good point. And I, I actually hadn't thought of that. Yeah. It's but you just, just sorry, it sort of played out for her in real life. Um, the, you know, a, a lot of things that people were saying about her in the press. And you, you really see yeah. that with, uh, with, you know, Cary Grant's, Cary Grant's character. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I suppose the, you know, the film again is, is really about this love story. And the one thing that is, is true of Hitchcock films is that these, you know, characters and 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 that is a traditional approach, uh, but he does it in these this really roller coaster ride way. <laughs> yes. Is, is that these characters start off a certain way and then they 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 really grow uh throughout the film. And then, you know, in, in the end, uh, you know, Grant when he he was so worried about what happened to her when he when they speak when yeah. they find out who she is and they start to slowly poison her. Um, and then he didn't see her for four or five days or, and then he starts to really, really get worried, worried to the point when, where he finds her and he basically says, I'm, I'm not quoting the exact dialogue, but he says, you know, that he, he was, you know, pig headed. Right. And he was acting. Yeah. Uh, in love with foolish. her from the beginning. I like yeah. the scene too, when he does stick up for her in private with the men, when they're talking bad about her 
and he yes that's right he, that's right he makes some point about oh she's not the fine woman your wife is or whatever <laughs> but she's doing this for her country or you yes. know he does stick up for her and i did like that quite a bit this came from a real uh case or stories that they had heard of a woman named i think i heard martha richard in world war one who was sent undercover to use her feminine wiles and charms and so she was kind of like a prostitute in World War I. And then there was a short story in, I don't know if it was the Saturday Evening Post, but it was in something about a woman who went undercover and a man was uh, very worried about introducing this woman to his mother, like, oh, what she did in the war. And the punchline kind of at the end of the story was the mom finds out and the mom is like super proud of this woman for you know fighting for her country and doing whatever to help and so the mom was more liberated than the the son thought the only thing they wound up keeping of course is that this woman goes undercover and must seduce people for information but um i do find it really crazy that nobody thought this would work like Selznick wasn't really interested. I think it was the uranium plot. He just didn't understand what was going on. This was a year before Hiroshima. The FBI was like, how do they, how does he know yeah. about uranium and put him under investigation for three months? And oh, that's such a crazy story. Wow. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Selznick like sold the, you know, the film and the people in it, like as a packaged RKO, like we don't want to make this movie. You guys do it. And it's just bananas when you think about it. But um, yeah, it's so, so compelling. Yes. Well, you know, that's I'm glad you brought that up because, again, it just illustrates the, the, the point because the point uh, that I that I, we, we were talking about earlier is, is that if you look at the, the stories on paper, they are very yeah. much like and, and <laughs> like, I can see what? how often <laughs> I can yeah. see how the studio would be like, what do you like? Why would this woman like, what, you, you know, <laughs> you, like not only that, like it, I can understand her going undercover, but what what, yes, what, what was exactly. interesting, what was interesting mm -hmm. was that um, she, they're like, uh, he, she very quickly at first, she's like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be yeah. involved in any of this. And she very quickly is convinced to do it. And then she, they don't even know exactly what, what it was that she was going to do. So can you imagine a job where you're like going <laughs> to yes. go to a move to another country, not know the details until you get there and then have to, like anyone would say, well, whoa, 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 what am I getting myself into? But they don't exactly. know anything until they actually get there. So again, he, again, he has all of these, I don't Variables know. Whether, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're not, they're not really flaws. I mean, it's just his way of telling stories. It's like taking the implausible, making it plausible and, and making the audience believe it by, by focusing on, the the emotions because i i get so involved in yes. the, in the in the love triangle and it and it essentially is really about um the three of them uh and uh you know and and that's what was really appealing about claude rains is that uh sir i think i went off my point earlier was that he's 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 not just a clear-cut uh bad guy i mean he no. really loves this woman and mm -hmm. and um, you can't help but feel for him when he finds out, you know, he sees that the key is missing after the party. And, and you know, then he, he, he puts it all together uh, when he wakes up in the night and then the key was returned. And he's thinking, well, and then he had just caught them kissing in the wine cellar. So, of course, he's he's putting it all together that she's an agent. And when he's just sitting there alone and he says to his mother, um, she's she's an agent and and I, claude rains is brilliant because he just brought that pain and the mm -hmm. embarrassment and the fact that if his you know if the the other nazis he's working with to find out about this he's going to be killed i i couldn't help but feel for the guy i mean even at the end when, when, when they're going <laughs> yeah, down the true. stairs and then Cary grant you know he's trying to get in the car and Cary grant's like no get out of here I, you know, on the one end, I was happy that Grant and Bergman were together finally, which is what you, I imagine most people want and what, what the story is directing you towards. Uh, but I couldn't help but feel sorry for this guy too, as he just looks back at you and you know, he's going to be killed. You know, I don't know if yeah. that was your experience with him. Um, well, yes and no, because he was poisoning <laughs> her and like, well, gaslighting <laughs> her. But at the same time, yeah, you do feel, I love that it's another like, wacky mother or matriarch oh i love like that yeah overwhelming woman in a hitchcock film 
for sure. He loved uh, playing up that. It is kind of funny that we're talking about it now because I'm rewatching The Americans because I'm uh, anticipating doing an episode with Roxana Haddadi on uh, The Americans, which is one of my favorite shows in the last like decade or so. And as I'm rewatching it and these people going undercover and just seducing and going into these situations where they think one thing and something else happens and they don't have all the information. And then I watch Notorious. I'm like, you know, spies, doesn't matter what time period. It's all kind of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Where you have yeah. to play like you don't know what you're getting into until you're in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's certainly it certainly inspired a lot. And, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Mission Impossible earlier. Um, yeah. Excuse me, but no, that's a good point because yeah, you're like <laughs> maybe I'm the only one who who's forgetting about the poison in that last scene because you're right. It's like how can you <laughs> how can you feel bad for this guy? But he's using the the for one thing the the POV shot, which is such a powerful mm -hmm. uh, shot that that Hitchcock always uses, and when he's putting you there, you're seeing through the eyes of of sometimes the protagonist but then sometimes the antagonist uh you know mo a movie like frenzy for example you know like when when the guy's in the car and he has to get the ring off the the one of the the women he kills uh, body because he knows that's going to be evidence against him and he's using pov as the as he's in this yes. back of his truck you can't help but because you're basically he's putting you in his in his pov and in, in the driver's seat and you can't help but go there i mean he's really sort of yeah, uh, manipulating you there or the and, car in psycho where you're like rooting for the car to go down in the swamp oh yeah like, yeah. yeah it's and like, you're like what up, am i Norman? doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's true it's uh it's a powerful shot and in that in that last scene as they're going down the stairs he's mm -hmm. constantly cutting well I, I i imagine it is claude rains i mean they're all looking in the same direction so it could either be carrie grant or claude rains or, or even the uh the mother uh, as they're slowly going down the stairs and then looking at the other Nazis and, and because they're cutting back and forth yes. and he's, and he's really, really extends the suspense by letting that, 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 that play down those stairs slowly for a long period of time, you know, your, your heart goes out to, to, to all the characters. I mean, it's another perspective there, emotional perspective for all three of them. Uh, and even the mother to an extent, you know, so that that is I, I i always find that um appealing about how he utilized uh yes. the medium the medium you know, in that way what's so good and it, he planned all of this out he always said that right. you know there was nothing left to chance in the editing room it was all done on paper nothing even while he was filming there were no like experimental happy accidents that wasn't how he worked but there's a scene um early on when you see her wake up and she's hung over and you know then it's the flip side of Cary Grant in the doorway and it's kind of a yes. sideways shot and it goes up well there's something similar as he's walking to the bed later we see the Claude Rains and the mother character kind of framed similarly when she's in her stupor of being poisoned yes. and it's linking these people as these are people who are manipulating her using her like a chess piece mm, and mm. she doesn't really have her own agency she has to figure out you know who she wants and what she wants to do but i thought that was a really clever and subversive way to link all three of those characters as being out for their own ends and using this woman in the process no very well said and i yeah i think he 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 as as you mentioned he was he was using POV throughout the film to to really uh, do that, and yeah, the one in the door, the one in the doorway that you mentioned early in the film is probably one of the more talked about in the film. Yeah, you know, you see Cary Grant in darkness at first. It's like this Dutch angle because she, yep. of course, she's lying on her bed, and then the camera kind of turns all the way around as she's turning mm -hmm. uh, and her POV on on Cary Grant. I even liked how he was using it when she was introduced to all the various Nazis. The first time she yes. goes into Claude Rains's place and she keeps cutting to this, this, these, these massive doors and this big mansion and everything is, is grand. And um, even as the mother, she first meets the mother again, there's that long staircase and he just, uh, well, it, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty much as a point of view, but 
the 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 actors don't look directly in the camera so mm -hmm. it's slightly objective because you see her hand you know come out of the frame to for them to kiss her hand but um so it's not quite point of view but it pretty much is and i just love how the mother uh slowly makes her way down the stairs and you just get this feeling that uh oh this is <laughs> yes. this is not going to be good and immediately she's i, I would have loved to have seen more scenes with claude rains and his mother in this because i find those I know. jealous mother dynamics in hitchcock's films so fun and so appealing you saw that in the birds you saw that of course in psycho you saw that in this um it's it's always uh um just great character character yep. stuff <laughs> yeah he loves doing that for sure uh, the shots in this movie i mean of course one of the most famous is through the binoculars at the racetrack when you see right. the horse run all the way across both sides of the binoculars that is used in casino by yeah i saw you Scorsese. post that online yeah, yeah i didn't um, even that didn't dawn on me you're oh, right oh de niro's sunglasses in the yeah. desert as he's waiting for joe pesci to show up um, it's one of my favorite little nods uh, because all of these filmmakers adore and love uh, Hitchcock. And of course, what's yeah. great about Scorsese is he was married to Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> and so that's Ingrid's daughter. Right. So it's kind of funny. Um, yeah. And, and he was I a think, major Rossellini fan too. So that's what's, oh, yes, you know. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. I always love that Rossellini, um, as an actress, she went for directors kind of like her dad. So I, was, yeah. I always thought that was funny. Yes. Very, like mother, like daughter, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And one of my favorite um, shots in this also is when we go from the top of the stairs, again, the stairs are used as a, it's a motif that goes through the whole film. Yeah. And we yeah. kind of go over this grand ballroom and it's a very sweeping shot until we see that it all really just boils down to where the key is. And yes. it's in her hand uh, and, you know, she needs to pass this key along to Cary Grant. Of course, it's Hitchcock, so he loves, he's not gonna miss the opportunity to do anything phallic. So it is a key. And so that is going to be used in an interesting way. But I love that it started upstairs with her getting ready and being intimate with her husband and hiding this key. But then in front of this big ballroom, she needs to pass along a key. And so there's this grand drama going on, but it's really just about this tiny thing. And I love that. Yeah, no, that works. It, it, it really really worked uh beautifully i felt mm -hmm. and I, I even liked um one thing that popped out to me is the first the one of the fir first scenes the party scene when carrie grant is at the party uh ingrid bergman is basically socializing she keeps drinking she's very upset about her father which is turning her, her to drink more and more as she can't deal yes. with it and carrie you don't even know it's carrie grant because he's it's just the back of his head but he's he's sort of shot in darkness you could in darkness such a good reveal yeah it's great you can see everybody else and hitchcock often did this where he's you're hearing one thing but he's he's telling you to look at something else and, yes. and his head really pops out um as as this mysterious person and then as everybody leaves he's sitting there alone and it just turns slightly to the side of his head it doesn't reveal his face uh, immediately. And it just gives you that feeling like, oh, what is, who is this guy? Yeah, what is this about? It's good. Yeah, it reminds Great. me of Cirque because everybody credits that with uh, Magnificent Obsession. You know, the famous shot of like Rock Hudson had been there all along listening right. and watching. And so the big pan, because that's where uh, Quentin Tarantino got that. He uses it all the time, especially in Inglorious Bastards. I think he uses it like two or three times, this sort of reveal later of who was listening to that. Right. And so right. it is cool that we see this and it, it actually predates Cirque and it's Hitchcock and Notorious. So good job, Robert. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was something I, I, I really hadn't pointed out. And I think it just gave that feeling of who is this guy? What is he up yeah. to? Is he up to no good? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, he and then he he allows her to dr drink and drive. Yes. Uh, and you're thinking, okay, but he he's he's very much in control. Like he's not yep. nervous. This is all part of some kind of a plan. And one thing I forgot, just on the note of we were talking about how, you know, uh, 
Grant has, you know, he's he says, you know, he's sexist and, and, and mm-hmm. he's, he's a bit of a seedier character. And I forgot that he actually knocks her out in that scene. Like I, for, I totally forgot. Yeah. Like it's, it's not, he doesn't kind of zoom into it and make it like really violent or anything, but she's arguing with him to the, to the point where, you know, he wants to take over the driving and then he just smacks her right out. I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, I, in the forties, I imagine you could get away with that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. Or just also the, the interplay that goes on between them. We already talked about the fact that like, it is a very sexy movie, but I love like one of her first lines as they're walking out to the car together is he says something like you know it's cold out you might need a jacket and she says something like well you'll do and that's right that's right yeah Yeah. it's just very casual like (laughs) whoa that just ratcheted their tension up to like an 11. I like this one a lot more than than I did I mean I always liked it but I think I I really enjoyed it uh much more so uh this time around was was there anything else you wanted to mention about this film I can't think of anything. Uh, Thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. It's such a good movie and I always enjoy chatting. So this was no, my pleasure. My pleasure. No, I'm glad that, uh, that you, you took the time to come back. Could you tell the, uh, the audience a little bit about what watch with Jen is all about? Sure. It's my podcast where I interview writers, actors, filmmakers, Uh, basically film writers, anyone with a really good handle on film. We explore a new topic every week where they come up with a theme and three to five movies that we kind of delve into. Anything from John Huston to women in crime movies. Those were two of the ones we did this season. And it's just a lot of fun. I always enjoy it. I've got to have Robert on for sure. Yes, uh, I'd love to. Yeah, and I'm going to be doing a spinoff podcast with my good f- friend, the critic Walter Cha, called Hitchcraft, actually. And we're going to be going chronologically through Hitchcock to film oh, wow. each uh, time, actually. So looking forward to that. Oh, that'll be great. Well, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I, I, yeah, like I said, I, I really enjoy your your show, your podcast. So I highly, those of you watching this now, highly uh, suggest going and checking out uh, Jen's great podcast and her website. Watch with Watch with Jen is the podcast, and I will leave the links in the description box below, as well as all of Jen's social media handles where you can follow her on Twitter, Instagram, and are you on? Fa- are, do you have a Facebook page as well? I closed that down actually, but <laughs> they can find me anywhere else. Yes. Twitter and Instagram is the best bet, yeah. I imagine. Okay, great. Definitely. And Perfect. I have a Patreon and yep, you can always reach me. Thank you. Yeah, no, anytime. Yeah, and I'll leave all that down below. So Jen, thanks again. Uh, I really appreciate that you that you came on and, and I hope you, I can have you back again sometime soon. Of course. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and or listening. If you are currently listening to my YouTube channel and the audio version of the podcast and you've run out of episodes to listen to, head over to the YouTube channel where every single episode that I've ever recorded can be found, youtube.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies. I also want to thank all of my members on Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, head over to the link, patreon.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies. Patreon is bonus content that I create month in and month out. And it is based on polls that I put out at the beginning of every single month, which as a member, you will have access to vote on, which means that you will be part of the decision making as to what I do on Patreon month in and month out. So for exclusive access, go to the link for full details. You can also leave a donation on my YouTube channel at ko-fi.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies. It is very easy to do so. And I will leave the link in the description box below. And lastly, if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the movies logo. You will see it floating above my head in the top left corner to your top left in just a second. Just click on that. And then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release one of my new episodes or when I go live. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the next episode.